Oh, I've done an album a little while back called um, A Very Nice Album. And I worked along the same lines, but just on the agenda of making it a shorter album because it turned into a double album the last time. A single album might be a bit more user-friendly. That's the overriding concept of the album. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, I think studio production is a great art in its own right. And if I knew half of the stuff like that someone like Trevor Horn or Quincy Jones or Mark Ronson knows, then I'd be a lucky bastard, innit? You know, we're not even pretending it's live. We've done a couple of tracks which are live takes, which we're not going to mess with. But the other ones, it's definitely studio production, and um, we're trying to keep the live feel. We've got Krishek, Christoph. Jejitz on drums. He's a new member of the band, relatively speaking, kind of like the Keith Moon of Polish jazz. So he's an animal. Then we got Shabbos, like Adam Kowalewski, who is like, I think, the best bass player I've heard in Poland and possibly in Europe with the timing that he's got. I think the timing is really important with the bass, you know. Then we got Piotr Wilczow. He's got great harmonic knowledge and a lot, you know, all the technical attributes that a piano player needs, but it's the kind of quality of sound that he makes, which I really love. After that, we got, like, uh, Tomasz Krzegorski. He's a monster. He'll listen and sit there with me listening to Ellington or Johnny Hodges or Coleman Hawkins, Ben Webster. So he's got the jazz history in him. Probably the structure and all the melodic content and harmonic content of a song is already sorted out in my head when I bring it in the band. But like, um, I normally have a, a section which is going to be more suited to that particular individual to to solo on. I'll have one section which suits Piotr Villagel to solo on, and then it'll be a totally different set of harmonies and melodic content for someone like Grzegorski tenor sax to improvise on. We've been playing together four years, and the development of all the players I've seen happening is just amazing. So it's the uh, kind of trick we're all making together. I've been started, first of all, with Neo Bop album, like, um, which was one I'd done with them in France for a DVD. Moving from that stuff, like, through to our first album of original music, now our second one, that's four years later, and Everyone grown that much more together, but also has developed as individuals. So it's a good combination of growth. Gonna see the river man. Gonna tell him all I can about the plan. I wanted to give like my band something English to play, and like something that we hadn't done before and the songwriting of Nick Drake is just so phenomenal and people don't know his stuff in Poland and I think they'd well enjoy it. So it's partially that. Plus, like, Nick Drake, without ever being a, a hit artist, I mean, even Riverman, which we've played, it wasn't a hit in his own lifetime because he was kind of too shy to perform his own music and that. But, like, um, I think there's a lot that music says to people. I tell you, this is my third album here in Rockfield, and I do love this studio. I think out of all the studios I've been in, I think it's the best for sound quality, what they get. It's got, yeah, as you say, like, there's some history here, very important history. And also, it's an ongoing, one of a few ongoing residential studios, as well as being the oldest. So it's got history, it's still here. It's still got a lot to offer in the world of modern music. So it feels like, yeah, being on the stage of Carnegie Hall or something. 
I mean, enjoying my music much more than I did before. Yeah, man, you know, like, and I've always enjoyed it. If there's one thing which has, like, been a kind of motif or a raison d'etre in my music making, it's to think about now and not think about tomorrow or yesterday or what someone said or what someone will say or what you think or what you're going to think. It's really like how you relate to the people around you and keeping music as a live entity which belongs in society as opposed to some kind of preconceived notion which you might as well just put up in an art gallery or something. Jazz is like as hard as you want to make it, but I think, you know, even in jazz I get a little bit kind of bored listening to performers making it as hard as they want to make it and as clever as they want to make it. At some point there's got to be a little bit of room for the spirit of music and what brings people together to actually listen to something. Well, like all my musician friends in the band come in from uh, Katowice Jazz Academy, but on the other hand, my, my music writing is very much influenced by English style and American style, because um, those are the two countries that I've lived in for quite a long time. So I'm not sure from my album if you, if you could recognise uh, Polish jazz style. It's more like they've really, like, my friends have got into my compositions and given themselves as individuals and a group to that. But whether it sounds Polish or not, I'm not sure. I guess they've entered my spirit because, like, the Polish aspect of life has, because I've been in Poland and I went there. I entered their country, the spirit of that country entered me. So it wasn't a big problem for me when Agnieszka said, hey, do you want to go and have a look at Krakow? And I went there and just fell in love with that city. I thought it was a phenomenal place. And there's going to be jam sessions where, like, um, we'll be getting Polish musicians, the best of them, with hopefully some of the best of the British musicians, like, getting together. So it's not just a Polish bubble on the South Bank for, like, a week. It'll be, like, you know, cross-culturalisation, which is what's happening in society, basically, isn't it? <laughs>